Show brought to you by your local Coca Cola bottler and by Frito Lay, makers of Lay's and Ruffles brand potato chips. Good day, everyone, and welcome to the Ray Perkins Show. Today, we will review Alabama's homecoming victory over Memphis State, a 37 0 victory. I'm Gus Hergert. Again, I'm joined by Alabama head coach Ray Perkins and former All American Dennis Holman. Coach, congratulations on your sixth win. Thank you, Gus. We're very proud of our team, to say the least. I thought they gave a real fine effort. And I think more important than that, the way that they went about things during the course of the week and, and really had their minds on things and good preparation during the week and follow it through during the course of the game. And we were able to play. Uh, some to my count anyway, some 65 or 66 players. So it's always nice when you can, when you can get uh, some of the younger players in or some of the players maybe that hadn't been playing that much uh, in the game and then see them over at the dorm and see them with their parents and their parents uh, really uh, happy about it and real proud of their, of their sons, which they should be. But it was awfully nice. It was a real fine weekend, a real fine day for us, homecoming. Uh, the pep rally on Friday night, uh, seeing so many people out, the people that have supported us all year long, and and uh, we just appreciate that support so much. And uh, Coach Bryant being inducted into the Hall of Fame, the recognition of the, all the contributions that Governor Wallace has given to this state and to our great university. And so it was uh, to come out of it with a victory and our defense playing great and getting a shutout and our whole team playing real well and giving us a great effort and coming out with a victory. So it was a very successful weekend for us. And Dennis, there were some real big catches in that Memphis State ball game as well. Well, there were. Clay Whitehurst had a had a great day. Uh, Greg Richardson, uh, Al Bell, all three did a, a tremendous job. It was just a great day, great homecoming. It was good to see uh, some of our old teammates from <clears throat> the 1960s. Uh, and in fact, uh, to be honest about it, I, some of them I think could still play, or at least they looked like they could. I was surprised uh, and looking. Of course, uh, I think mentally they might play, but physically I'm, I'm not sure about. Their old legs probably wouldn't make it. <laughs> they wouldn't make it too long, that's for sure. Yeah. But it was a great homecoming day and a great homecoming victory. And I'd just like to uh, commend Coach Perkins and his staff for a great job in preparing our football team to play. That was uh, a tough fought football game against a team that uh, had uh, nothing to lose and everything to win. Did a great job. When we come back, we will review Alabama's victory over Memphis State. Stay with us. Coming at Brian Denny Stadium on Saturday afternoon, the first time, Coach, that it really felt like football weather. Nice, comfortable well, chill. Kind of cool, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit of a breeze, but uh, overcast skies, uh, Gus, but it's the first time that we played this year where, where it wasn't a little bit warm out there on the turf, especially. But uh, it was a real good day for, for everybody that was involved, all of our people come back, our alumni and so forth that came back for the homecoming. And one of the best things, uh, or two, two, the two best things about the game, I think, was number one, we won the game, of course, and number two, we came out of the game without any injuries. I think the only injury that we had was a slight sprained ankle to Kerry Good, uh, our fullback there early in the second half. But other than that, I don't think we got anyone, uh, anyone hurt. <clears throat> our defense here is just they sprang it loose and. Uh, and uh, they get uh, two or three plays on us here, but our defense just played great. You know, we missed a few tackles, but you're gonna miss a few tackles when you, when you play in every game. But our defense just played super. They've been playing super all year. And I tell you, it's a tribute to our, it's a tribute to our staff, uh, our defensive staff, and it's a great tribute to our players because they're really working hard and giving great effort trying to do the things that we're asking them to do. And I think we're asking our players to do the right things and. Uh, and uh, getting the job done uh, on a very high level defensively. <clears throat> Here offensively, there's a little counter sweep to Bobby Humphrey. Bobby Humphrey had a great day. I thought our offense played real well, a lot better than last week. And I think we, I thought we adjusted well in certain cases during the course of the game because defensively, they did not play what we expected them to play. 
we uh, prepared all week for something other than what they played. They come into the game and play something totally different than what we had prepared for, and that's basically the way that they did. Here's a great catch by Al Bell. Super catch. <clears throat> but uh, uh, they played uh, Mississippi State last week, totally different than what they played the previous four games. So when a team does that, it causes you some problems, and you have to adjust to, to a certain degree during the course of the game. And I thought our players handled that real well during the course of the game. <clears throat> Throw a little quick screen pass out here. Derek Slaughter reads it, comes out, makes the play. I thought he had a real good day. Cliff Thomas had a real good day. Our entire defensive football team had a good day. Well, I think you're taking a little pride oh, in keeping them out well, of the end zone, you know, doing you know, having a lot of fun. Just having a lot of fun out there. There's Randy Rockwell. He is a gutsy player. I'm telling you, he's he had playing a great with day. A, a knee that's bothering him somewhat. He's wearing a brace on it now, but I'll tell you what, he loves the game. Here's a pass to Bobby Humphrey. He goes down and gets it, makes a real good catch. Here's Mike. He's going to tuck this one and run with it. <clears throat> Get down there. See it. Good slide. Okay. It was a good block there, uh, helping him out uh, from Greg Richardson. But uh, here's one of the three times, I think it was, that we, that we have to settle for a field goal. We have to give their, their players and their defense a little credit. And, uh, you know, we, we come up 10 to nothing after the, at the end of the first quarter, but I thought overall, you know, I thought our team's getting after it pretty good right now. I feel pretty good right now. And, and we're not making some of the mistakes that really, really hurt you. From an offensive standpoint, our defense through the course of the game turns the ball over three times, so mm -hmm. we'll see that a little bit later on. We'll come back and take a look at the second quarter action. Stay with us. We begin second quarter action. Alabama leading Memphis State at homecoming 10 to nothing. Big crowd on him. It took us, yeah, it was. It was just packed. It was, uh, I couldn't believe the number of people. I don't know if we've got a count or even we're close to it, but the number of people that went through our facilities, through the football building and also our indoor facility and our, and our Coliseum, because we had open house Friday <coughs> afternoon and Saturday morning. And I'm, on, I'm telling you, there were just, uh, had to be thousands of people that came over to, to go through our facilities, and I'm certain that they were impressed. Here our defense holds again, and and Greg Richardson returns it. We had, a, uh, it took us a little bit of time there early in the game to, to, to make some adjustments and get used to what they were doing to us defensively. Here's Bobby Humphrey getting some good yards. I think Bobby gained over, over 100 yards. <clears throat> Here's a little pass out to Al Bell. Gaines picks up about eight yards, real good running. That's a good job by Al wrapping the ball up there. A little toss play back to the strong side, short side of the field to Kerry Goob. Kerry does some real nifty running here. Does a real good job. I hope his ankle is not real bad. Uh, Chris Smith, after the game, told me it wasn't uh, it wasn't, wasn't a real serious type turn, or just a minor minor sprain. I hope it didn't swell up on him overnight. But I thought uh, through the course of the game we got better and better uh, as it went along, and that's just getting a little bit more used to what they're trying to trying to do. To almost a great catch here by Al Bell. He couldn't quite quite pull it in or hang on to Almost it. a repeat of his first uh, That's catch. Right. That first catch was one handed. Remind me of Dennis Holman of yesteryear. <laughs> oh, yeah. sure. Real good run here, real good vision by Bobby Humphrey here to get the to get the ball in the end zone. Coach, I thought our offensive line did a great job yesterday too of uh, blowing them out, firing out. Uh, they, like did they did a lot better job. Every once in a while, you know, they'd line up. Like I say, they didn't line up. I don't think they lined up one time against the stuff that we worked on. And uh, it goes to show you how smart we are, how smart I am, I guess, uh, of working on something or trying to figure out what they're going to play. And they come in the game and just change up. And, uh, well, that's a problem with a team like that because they know they're, they're going with what they're facing. They're going to try something different, and it's hard to sometimes well, to that's prepare what they're going to do. Yeah, that's one of the dangers, you know. Uh, uh, one of the things from an offensive standpoint or defensive standpoint, to a degree, you don't know uh, exactly what they're going to do. They're a team that's trying to find themselves. They've committed themselves to a lot of young players. And, uh, but, a, but a game like this, one that you, you know, you're expected to win and you expect yourself to win and you and you feel pretty confident that you're going to win to still, like our players did during the course of the week and through the game, to prepare themselves and follow it through the game, it's, it, it has impressed me. You know, it's not surprising to me. 
but uh, because we've got some fine people and some really fine players. Well, they sure. I was just, I was real happy to see how we approached this game. We didn't approach it any differently than we did any other. There's Murray Hill. Glad to see Murray <coughs> Hill. A lot of our good young game. players, real good to, real good to see them uh, get in there and have a little success. And and uh, it was real, it was especially gratifying to me to see uh, a lot of the mothers and fathers uh, over at the dorm with their, with the, with the players. Uh, to cook out after the, after the game and just seeing the little gleam in their eye, how proud they are of their sons. There's Cornelius Bennett, he had a super day. They did. You yeah. lead seven, 17 to nothing at halftime, and, and a very nice thing happened at halftime. Not only did you crown the queen and Governor Wallace was recognized, but the Hall of Fame inducted Coach Bryant into the Hall of Fame. Well, I said, uh, Gus, I said during the course of the week that uh, you know, Coach Bryant used to invite me when I was coaching in New York. He would call and invite me to <coughs> sit at his table mm -hmm. at the Hall of Fame dinner there every year in, in, in the early part of December. And uh, certainly I accepted all of them and uh, went over. And, I, and every every year I'd kind of wonder, you know, I didn't know what the, what the qualifications were, the criteria was uh, for being inducted into the Hall of Fame. But I kind of wondered, uh, you know, here's the best coach, the greatest coach to ever live in college, college football. And he's not in the Hall of Fame. So in a way, I, I say it's an overdue thing, but certainly it's very well deserved because I, I do think, and I feel like it's a great honor for me to have known and played for uh, uh, the greatest coach and probably the greatest college coach that will ever be. You know, I don't think there'll ever be one that uh, that uh, does any any better job than, than, he, than he's done and made the contributions to so many lives that he's made. And there's the presentation at halftime, as well as you will see Governor George Wallace crowning the queen at homecoming, as Alabama will pick back up in the third quarter, leading 17-zip. We're also just very appreciative and, and recognizing, I thought it was fitting too, Gus, that uh, we recognize Governor Wallace for the great contributions that he's made to the state and uh, to our great university and his great university. Their guy comes out to, uh, <clears throat> on the kickoff return and does a super job of returning. Here's Randy Rockwell. He reads the option. The quarterback's going to keep it on Tim Jones, and he just flattens him right back. And uh, I'm telling you, he's a gutsy player. I tell you. He had 22 players like him and keep them healthy. You don't lose a game. He seems like he's always the right place at the right time. Yeah. Uh, makes big plays. You know, one of the biggest comments I heard after yesterday's game from, from people that I talked to was, you know, with all the players that we used yesterday, you, you didn't tell that much difference. Everybody came in, did their job. And, and played like they should have. Well, that gives you an indication everybody's ready. You know, everybody did the little things that it took or <clears> did <throat> a high percentage of the little things that it took to get themselves ready to be ready when they're when and if their number was called. And I think in a game like this, I think a lot of the younger players too, Dennis, uh, probably sense that their opportunity might be a lot better. You know, I'm oh, getting true. in the game. You know, it's, just, it's a great job. We got a real good punt. It's a real good job for our, by our coverage people to get them down there and back them up to the one yard line. <clears throat> our defense was, uh, was really hitting out there, uh, causing, uh, I think it was like seven or eight fumbles. Picked up two of them. But uh, just to knock them loose and, uh, and cause that many fumbles. And the defense, the last two or three games, are not only playing great defense and keeping them out of the end zone, but they're turning the football over. And uh, I think that's a that's a big, big factor. Here's a little slant pattern to Greg Richardson. Good job by Mike Shua. Mike played extremely well all day. <clears throat> Here's a little, little counter sweep there to Bobby Humphrey. Hits it up in there for about 10 or 12 yards. Bobby's just got such great running vision. He sees things so well. He sees his blocking going on in front of him. Shula's pass. That's a super job, of course. As you mentioned, Mike Shula had a great day. He's mm -hmm. just a headsy ball player. It's just not going to yeah. get you beat making right. mistakes. Here's a big third down play. <clears throat> it, to, to make tight plays like that right there. <clears throat> Real good job by Bobby on the, on the receiving end of it. They finally hold us, uh, and we wind up settling for a field goal there. And you're on your way to a shutout, as it appears in the third quarter, and actually what will happen. We will look at the fourth quarter in Alabama's first shutout of the year. Stay with us. I'm not sure you can ever say it enough how well all the young men played during the course of this ball game. Well, it's, uh, you know, I, it's always gratifying, 
you know, as a coach, uh, to be able to get as many people in the game as you possibly can. Because they've worked extremely hard from, from August uh, through September, and now here we are in October, and mm -hmm. uh, meetings and practices and so forth and so on. So as many as you can, uh, every week I'd like to get as many as I could into the game, and I feel badly that, that we didn't get some in that we would have liked to have gotten in, but uh, the fact remains that we did get to play a lot, they did get out there, and they did have some success, and they have to have a pretty good feeling about themselves today. As we begin to look at the fourth quarter highlights, you will find how well Alabama did continue to play in keeping their shutout alive against Memphis State, the first shutout at Bryant-Denny Stadium since Penn State two years back. Fourth quarter highlights. Just hold on for uh, 15 minutes, and... Uh, and do well, we got a shutout. And it's real good for the defense. You know, I think that gives them this big third down play here to Greg Richardson. And, uh, but it's a real gratifying thing for a defensive football team, you know, when they, when they can say, hey, we, we shut this team out. And regardless of what team it is, here's a long play, a 40, 45, 50 yard pass play from Mike to Greg Richardson for a touchdown. It was a play that we felt like had a real high percentage chance of working. And, and call it, and they executed it extremely well. On the kickoff here is Butch Worley doing the kicking off, and that's Todd Richardson. Uh, his mother was down from Syracuse, New York, and I'm certain that she's real proud of proud of Todd and the job that he's doing, and she should be. Here's another fumble, and we didn't, this is not one of the two that we picked up, but it's one that we caused from uh, good hitting, good, good defensive play. But uh, uh, all of our guys, there's, pretty much the first offensive line and we're cheering that second offensive line on. Here's a big third, third and 15, a great, great catch. I mean, absolutely a great catch uh, by Clay Whitehurst. This is the one that you were mentioning earlier, Dennis. It's probably one of the better catches you'll see all year, Clay Whitehurst. I know he's glad to be able to get his hands back on the ball, he too. He's a super he athlete. You. He hasn't been playing a lot because he's been He's had a sore finger. Here's a reverse. He's going to show a little show speed a little here. Speed, yeah. You know, he don't have great speed, but he's got real good speed. He'll fool you if you're not careful. And uh, he does a great job of running that reverse. And Mr. and Mrs. Whitehurst was in town yesterday. And it's always good to see them. But uh, Clay's had a little bit of a, he's had his finger in a cast for, for much of the year. And it's since before the uh, uh, Ohio State game. And he's just not getting that back well, so we'll Kinda be hard seeing, to catch a, lot, football we'll be seeing a lot more of him. Well, he's a great guy and a super athlete, mm -hmm. and I know it was, it was good for him, but you speaking of specialty teams a while ago, I know you've got to be proud of your specialty team. Did well, a great job yesterday. Our kicking game has <clears> been improving, and it's week to week. I was real happy to see that Chris Moore had a real, real good, consistent day of punting the football. Uh, Van Tiffin got back on track. You know, last week he... Uh, <clears throat> missed a field goal and uh, had a little bit of a problem on the extra point. I told him in practice this week that he probably hit a wedge when he should have hit a nine iron. <laughs> but, uh, he just showed he was human. Yeah, there. but he's uh, he's a great young man. I'll tell you what, he was, he's, he's dedicated and uh, uh, he's not going to miss many, I guarantee you that. So I don't worry about Van Tiffany at all. He's a professional. He's a professional in college. That's what he is. We had just a little bit of a mix up here. David, David Smith, my might have scored, but uh, I was real happy to see David in, and I was real happy for the job, and happy for him, really for the real, real fine job that he did while it was while it was in there. You know that that entire second unit moved the ball, and you like to have them, you like to see them have some success and move the ball and score a touchdown and and get a feeling of uh, of accomplishment. Coach, congratulations to you and the team and the staff on an outstanding homecoming victory for Dennis Holman and head coach Ray Perkins. I'm Gus Herger. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back at our regular times next week. Until then, good day. The Ray Perkins Show has been brought to you by your local Coca-Cola bottler and by Frito-Lay, makers of Lay's and Ruffles brand potato chips. Ray Perkins' wardrobe has been supplied by Blacks.